my team. It is June 24th. And I'm actually gonna leave the dock to do some meaningful tuna fishing. Oh my God. It's around 11 a.m. Uh, still not sure where we're headed yet. I'll see what any updated sat shots look like. Uh, I got five guys with me, so Let's see, man. I'm so excited. Mm. All right, y'all. I always show you on these overnighters. I mean, look how much gear. <laughs> All this sterling stuff over there. Food. Plenty of drinks in there. Check this one out. <laughs> I'd say we're. I'd say we got enough beers. We are all ready to roll, baby. All right, y'all. It's time to leave land behind us. My favorite thing to do. Mikey, say hi to the world. Hello, world. Let's get some fish. Big Mikey's back. Let's we'll see if I can regain my mojo here. Thank today all right so what i did was i always go shotgun ballyhoo way out the back and i like using the high vis yellow so i can see it so that's a ballyhoo in tight we have two splash bars that one's purple that one's rainbow yeah and then i went old school on the longs i have ballyhoo and then on the mids i just have a chain on this side and then an old school splash bar on that side and then on the short rigger right off the tip actually I have two wide trackers, as you can see. And then I wiggled one more value out, so. I think we're at 10 rods, and that should be plenty. On my 32 Pro line, I kill lots of fish with seven rods, so this should be sufficient. There's something about these overnight trips. I love being in the cockpit. I don't know why. But all the other trips, I, don't, I, don't, I just want to be up there. These overnights, I love being down there. Look at this one, it's brand new. Look how pretty that one these bars, these close glass bars, right there. That's it. That up close, that's cool. You'll see them come right up. When we're yellowfin fishing, I always say the very most important thing when we get bit, don't touch the rod. Your instinct is always to go grab the rod, right? You're like, ah, we got a fish. Don't touch the rod. That's the last thing you want to do. All right. When you get these yellowfin bites. We're actually going to troll almost for a full minute because I want five on, right? Then once I say, all right, guys, we're good, any rod that doesn't have a fish, just start clearing it and get that out of the way. And then I'll use the boat to keep tension, okay? And then hopefully we get multiple bites. And then from there, I'll kind of say, all right, let's bring this one in because it's closer. And it's not fun, right? The other Thomas. When we can, when we can. Keep that line over there. Keep that line over there. No, no, just do, do your thing. Okay. One or two more cranks. Ah! 
That's one, baby. That's one, baby. Woo oh, it felt so good. Good job. Oh, it feels so good. Look at you, baby. Oh, God, this has been months and months of engine work, yeah, yeah. hassle, heartache. Not a giant fish. Oh, I've never been so excited to kill the elephant in my whole life. Oh, my God. Look at the blood all over me. Ah, yeah. Ah. Yes. God, I needed that. On me. Yes. Ah, yes. Harlan. Come here, let me, let me kill you. Thank you. Man, he ran for, where do you, uh, he ran for a little, little guy. Nice. Watch, I go right, right, right there. there. Okay. Got it, get me. And then just get him right behind here. Keep you over here. A lot of times I'm not going crazy. I'll cut his gill a little bit too. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right, we'll let him bleed a little bit. Awesome. All right, so. Well, that took long. Oh. Yeah. The little one, Chris, or the small one? I like 40 pounder, just a single. Wow, nice. There you go. I don't know if you can see, I'm bloody. Ah, I'm where I belong in my fly bridge. 75 miles from home, which is where I belong. Ah, sounds so cliche and cheesy, I really don't care. A lot of hard work, hours, sweat in that engine room. A lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of swearing. And, uh, God, I need that. All right, y'all, let's quick update. It's 4.30, uh, really just that one bite, that's it. Uh, my buddy's, my buddy Paulie's out here. Uh, I think he only has, like, one keeper. Sounds like they stop midday to tile fish, and he's got, like, Maybe eight or nine throwbacks. Uh, there's some life out here. The water's ugly. It's 67 and almost looks like we're in shore. Um, I just saw a whale. I did see some two tones. So we'll see. I'm going to head out a little deeper water, kind of work northeast. See if I can find a little. I just need a break, like a one to two. Even like sometimes, guys, even a one degree temperature break. If you can find that edge, it can be good. Save your trip. So we'll see. We haven't been trolling all that long. Still getting the pulse from the trip. So we'll see. The guys, see if you have fun. I'm in my glory. Do the best you can. That's all you can do. It's not as important now, but but yeah, you just kind of need to guide it. Just like your bass fishing. So that was awesome, guys. See what we did? Like we trolled a little bit longer until I was confident it was a single. And then we cleared one side. And then all the while, what we'll do is we'll just keep an eye on these. Like right now, he's staying on that port. But if he starts to move, then we just got to be quick about getting these shorts in. Usually these longs, the wriggle will keep it past it. You know what I mean? So we just got to keep an eye on this. So it's always nice to not have to bring the whole spread in. Because then once you're on a bite, you want to be able to get right back out there. All right, guys. So I was working northeast. Finally got bit again. It's been a while. Seems like a small fish. He bit in close on a, I guess that's a, I don't know what's kind of size bar. It's a 36 inch bar. I'm not sure exactly the color. We'll find out. It's got to be a skippy or a small elephant, I would imagine. That little baby elephant, look at you. Hey, cutie. Look how cute you are. Look how cute you are. Look how cute you are. All right, where well, there's little ones, there's big ones. Hey, look how pretty you are. Bye bye, baby. Get down there. Yeah. There we go. All right. Good. Yeah. There's any fish with them here. There they go. They 
you guys. All right, guys, quick updates. Uh, it's about 10 to 8. Um, just the one keeper so far, and I think five rats on that one little, you know, pass. That's really been about it. Uh, a lot of life on the northeast corner. We had pilot whales galore. I have marked tons of bait, but uh, no fish. So we probably got another hour of trolling here. Hopefully something happens. Uh, that's all we can do. Uh, I got word there's fish now. Well, there was a good bite way up in the tom. That's like 60 plus miles. So that's not an option. So we just kind of got to hope they turn on here, maybe some morning bite. We'll see. All right, guys. So right around 845, just got bit. I saw him come up and bite it, missed it, and then he came right back for it. So let's see. Come on, baby. Be another keeper. After five hours of nothing, that'll happen. <laughs> I'll let you know if you need a gaff. Uh, not too little. Yep. Yeah. Tiny. Night time, and we got our fancy lights going. Pretty cool. Reaper red, Darth Vader red now. I've got it on rainbow, so it'll adjust. So these are our sea blazers that I installed. And we actually had a runoff on one of the shark rods, uh, but he didn't come tight, so we'll see. I'm gonna just kind of go chill out a little bit, put a movie on, relax. And hopefully we see better fishing in the morning, because that was pretty slow, but I did find a little one degree break on this side, so we'll, uh, we'll see. Uh, hopefully I'll catch up with you when I got a make out right there. If not, I'll see you in the morning. All right, night guys, um, no Mako bites. We did have a couple shark runoffs. Um, I think it was just a couple hammerheads that were goofing off with our baits. Um, nothing big, but uh, you know, Steve had a good time rolling this one in and uh, they're awful fun to look at. Never gets old looking at a, a really neat, beautiful hammerhead. Um, all fired up at the boat there. All right, guys, what I'm alluding to there, you know, me yapping to the crew, at night in the canyons, um, no matter what, and I actually do this when I'm day sharking too, um, anytime we set the hook on a shark that has some kind of weight to it, I always treat it as a mako. I put the boat in gear, I get away from it. Um, I've had makos just kind of lull you to sleep, and, you know, you think it's just a dusky, a brown, a hammerhead, and, you know, before you know it, five minutes later, you got a 150-pound mako fired up at the side of the boat. So treat every good, you know, runoff like it could possibly be your keeper mako um it's kind of a moot point at this point uh with the mako season being closed with the new regulations but i figured i'd share anyway no no y'all all right go you can start clearing that side okay That was so cool. Did you see him? I looked up and I saw the back end of him as he was going. We had a Wahoo do that once. And he came up, he hit it, and I he, he came so high up and he had the, the chain in his mouth. And then he spit it when he hit the ground. I mean, he skyrocketed. Yeah, guys, I actually saw this fish air out on the spreader bar right in tight. Uh, it was really neat. He missed it and then he came right back for it. We'll get him. We'll get him. Stay very patient here at the end game. It's a nice one. Good job. A couple more cranks. Okay. Walk up that way. Okay. All right. Nice. I got him. Nice. I don't miss, baby. Woo! Good job, dude. Good job. All right, good. Get me back and forward. Try and just keep me straight. Beautiful yell, Finn. That'll wake you up. That was a port, port wide tracker. Okay. Good. 
Okay, that's good. good. Yep, that's good. All right, team, out back. Finally getting around to editing this video. Sorry for the delay, but I really wanted to show you there the importance of, it's just as important as catching, killing, bleeding these fish, you know, getting them in the, in the brain to, um, you know, hasten their death, I should say, um, and get you the best quality meat. But it's really important. You can see there I have bags of ice. Uh, Mike the Mortician bought me an ice machine. And what I do the night before is I, I ba it basically makes drink ice. And then what I do is I bag all that ice and I put it in my deep freezer. So when I take it to the cooler, it's, it's frozen solid. Um, and I bring tons and tons of ice, as much as my boat can reasonably hold. And then you can see, um, I've showed you before in prior videos, those are our custom fish bags that Zach was nice enough to go out and order for the boat. Um, but yeah, it's really important if you're going to go out there and kill these fish, um, be respectful. Only take what you're going to respectfully eat, share, um, and treat them right so you have a good product. Um, I hate to see fish just killed and laying there warm and, you know, wasted. That's just silly. Don't do that. Good job, dude. Giddy up. Good job. All right, guys. It's about 9 a.m. Day two. <coughs> we just had that 40 pounder first light, and then uh, I think two rats. That's it, guys. It's been a very, very slow trip. In addition, um, well, it's a long story, but the moral story is I drained two of my batteries. Uh, luckily, I was able to get the starboard motor going. That's a whole nother lesson that we won't talk about now. But uh, yeah, it's just been a tough trip, but nonetheless beautiful out here i'm in the damn canyon i got no complaints so we're going to give this just a little longer and then we're going to run on home i'll probably take a look at the 30 line if i see something stellar we'll try to hang a bluefin if not um it is what it is if we get home safe i'll, I'll be happy so we'll see All right, team, so just continuing with Captain's Corner. I hope you guys like this approach. This may be a little more in-depth um, as to the way I think to try and find these fish. Um, so I talk about a lot of different ways of, of finding these fish and, and really going out there and being successful. Um, so one is studying these charts, especially early in the season. The temperature breaks are important, and I'll, I'll zoom in and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Two, intel, um, and then three, it's also trusting your gut. For me, trusting my gut is huge. Um, Normally in the early season, for some reason, I second guess myself way more than any other time in the year. Typically, once I'm killing tuna and I'm in my own little groove, I don't care what anybody else says or does, I'm in my own frame of mind and I, I am confident every time I'm gonna know where they are, I'm gonna find them. Tom Caesar says I can smell them, he even says I jump in and stab them. I've been known to do that, but, well, not really, maybe kind of, sort of, but anyway. Um, let me go ahead and zoom in here and I'll show you I'll show you kind of what I did wrong on this trip, at least in my opinion, but um, I followed intel instead of my gut. And I've been known to do that early in the season, and I don't like that, but it is what it is. It's helped me in some trips, and it's hurt me in other trips. This time it hurt me. We caught some fish, we had a great time, no complaints. Uh, we probably caught, I think, maybe 10 fish, I don't remember. We only killed two though, a lot of rats. Um, you know, small yellowfin, but I'll zoom in and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, guys, so hopefully you can see this here. So this is the Tom's Canyon up here, all right? So this green here is kind of having a little bit of Gulf Stream interaction. So while this orange here is the Gulf Stream, and then it's starting to just spread this warmer water in here. And this warmer water was like 70 degrees. Warmer water was about 70.5. And right on that blue, from memory, it was about 67 or so. And this time of year, that little temperature break that little temperature break is really what you're looking for. Um, and my gut told me that's where the fish were going to be. Uh, but I did get word that right before we left, a buddy boat hadn't had a lot of fish there. Um, and then I got word that down here in the Wilmington Canyon, there were some fish being caught. There's not much of a temperature change there. I mean, you can maybe make a case that you get a little slight bump on the southwest corner. And we did find a slight little one degree temperature break there. Um, but we didn't find the kind of fishing that ultimately turned on up here in the Tom's Canyon. And had I followed my gut, I would have laid in on like my buddy boat did. So um, it is what it is. You know, 
had I ran, and not only that, it's a lot further. It's a lot further to go to the Toms than it is to go to the the Wilmington. For me, you know, fishing the northeast corner of the Wilmington, that's 72 miles. Fishing out there where that water was is 90 miles. So it's a little bit of a change. Um, I never mind burning diesel fuel, uh, but if you get word there's fish a lot closer to home, why run further, right? Especially with diesel at this time being, I think, almost seven dollars a gallon. Um, but anyway, no complaints. It is what it is. I just figured I'd share that with you. Sometimes you got to trust your gut. Sometimes you got to go with, um, you know, the intel and where fish are being caught. So, Captain's Corner, baby. All right, team, this is kind of like my captain special. I usually get this right off the rack. You know, after I do my loins, right, I get my little captain special, so. What are you doing, buddy? What are you doing? Rambo super pumped. Look, he's into it. Don't plop off. You're gonna plop off the thing. Don't plop off the thing, dude. You're gonna fall. Look, you're gonna fall. Relax, see? You're gonna plop off the thing, Rambo. Look. All right, y'all. So first tuna of the year. Ugh, this is probably one of the latest I've uh, ever had my first tuna of the year. Rambo's excited again. Um, but fresh elephant, sashimi, is pretty tough to beat. A little wasabi, a little soy. Oh my god, it's unbelievable. I uh, never really did this, like super raw like this, until I went to Costa Rica for the first time. Well, no, that's the first time, second time. And uh, just get it right off the boat, just like this. And since then, I've been in love. That was probably... God, I don't even know how many years ago, but it's just so good. No matter, I would say, no matter how tired I am after every trip, if I have tuna, I'm going to do this no matter what. It's just so good. It's hard to describe how, how good it tastes. It's almost like a, a candy slash, and then you get the salt from the soy. It's just, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's worth every dime, every minute of effort, all the sweat, hard work. It's just so good. So, anyway, enough of me yapping. I'm going to eat all of this, and then I'm going to make some more.